Are you purchasing a new aircraft or have you had an aircraft for many years? If so, this video is perfect for you. We are gonna be talking about the five main coverages that you can purchase for your aircraft, starting from the most basic and cheapest coverage, working our way through all the coverages until we get to the final coverage, the best coverage that you can purchase for your aircraft. Well, it's Caleb here from Air 101 and let's get to it. So what is the most basic coverage that you can purchase so you can fly your aircraft legally in Canada? Before we answer that, make sure that you stay to the end of this video because at that point, I'm gonna tell you why it's so important that you know what this coverage is. And I'm also gonna talk about by only having this coverage, how it could affect you in the event of a loss. The cheapest coverage that you can purchase for your aircraft in Canada is liability only. This will give you third-party liability so that you can meet Transport Canada's regulations and fly your aircraft in Canada. And in most cases, will also give you passenger coverage coverage as well. Third party liability is commonly known as PL and PD coverage, personal liability and property damage coverage. What this means is let's say one day you are flying your aircraft and right before you land your aircraft, you have an engine failure and you end up hitting the top of a building just before the runway. You managed to survive the accident, but in the process of hitting the top of the house, some of the shingles fell off the roof and ended up hitting somebody that was walking by. Well, in this case, a damaged roof would most likely be covered under the property damage section of the policy. And if the person that got hit by the roof shingle ended up suing you, then the personal liability section part of the policy would most likely cover this part of the loss. If you cause third party injury or property damage, this is where this third party liability would most likely cover you in the event of a loss. Well, congrats, you made it through the boring details part of this video and have finally made it to the most important part of this video. So thank you for sticking around. Now that you understand that you need to legally have third party liability to be able to fly your aircraft in Canada and what this third party liability means and covers, and now I want to answer what you should really know about this coverage and how it can actually benefit you in the event of a loss. And then I want to discuss why you should buy all risk flight and ground coverage instead of just liability only. Number one, liability only gives you defense costs. When you look into a policy, you most likely will see a section called defense, settlement and supplementary payments. In this section, the insurance company states that they will pay certain expenses beyond the limits of the aircraft liability insurance. These expenses include legal defense costs. This is huge and is so important that you know this. Without aircraft liability insurance, an aircraft owner will be responsible for all such defense costs. So what this really means is if you have purchased a $1 million liability limit and you go and have an accident and an individual sues you for a million dollars, the insurance company, if they need to pay out this loss of a million dollars, there will also most likely cover your legal expenses on top of the million dollars. This is awesome because in the event of a loss, what this means is that the insurance company has your back. And remember, even the most minor incident could run up a substantial legal expense. So when you buy liability, you really do get a great coverage. Number two, buy more than just liability only coverage. As an aircraft owner, you should buy all risk flight and ground coverage, not just liability only. So what this means is you should buy the third party liability so that you can once again legally fly your aircraft in Canada, but you should also buy hull coverage damage for your aircraft. So that in the event of a loss, the insurance company will either fix your aircraft or they will cut you a check less than deductible to replace your aircraft. A lot of people want to buy liability only because it's so cheap, but many people don't realize that all risk flight and ground coverage is not that expensive either. A lot of pilots buy liability only, and when I'm talking to them on the phone, they say they don't need full all risk flight and ground coverage because they say if they end up crashing the aircraft, they're just going to die anyway, so it doesn't really matter if they purchase the full coverage. I really want to talk about this for a second. First of all, with regards to crashing the aircraft and dying in an accident, here's the thing, the majority of accidents that I've either dealt with or heard in most cases, the pilot as well as the passengers end up surviving. And this is where it's nice if you have purchased all risk flight and ground coverage because you just had an extremely traumatic event. And this is where the insurance company will go and get the aircraft, take care of the recovery costs, etc. And here's the second thing that we should all think about as pilots. What if we have family, a spouse, children? If we do unfortunately pass away in an accident, we would want to make sure that our family has been looked after. By having the aviation insurance company look after everything, get the aircraft, take care of recovery costs, etc. When you buy liability only, you don't get coverages such as forced landing coverage, which means then your family will end up having to look after getting the aircraft, which can be a very difficult process. So if you really just want to buy liability only for your aircraft just to save a little bit of money, here's a small recommendation I want to give you. You should 
should put aside a fund for your family so that they can use this to go get the aircraft in the event of an accident. Plan out roughly how much it will cost to recover the aircraft. Write down a list of companies that can actually recover the aircraft. Let them always know exactly where you're flying your aircraft so that they know where they might have to go get the aircraft if there is an accident. Write down which mechanics that can fix the aircraft. Or if the aircraft can't be fixed, write down the companies that will buy the aircraft for salvage, etc. See, doesn't that sound like way too much work? Well, this is why you should buy all risk flight and ground coverage. It truly is the best coverage that you can buy and it will put your family at ease knowing that the aircraft insurance company will look after all the details in the event that an accident happens. That is why I personally will not fly an aircraft that does not have all risk flight and ground coverage on it. If you're planning on storing your aircraft for a year and you want to make sure that your aircraft is protected, then you will want to buy all risks not in motion with static liability. What does that really mean? I'm going to answer that in a second, but make sure that you stay to the end of this video because at that point, I'm going to quickly tell you what could void this coverage if you do this. What is that? Well, you're going to find out in exactly two minutes and 43 seconds. All risks not in motion, including static liability, will help protect your aircraft while it is on the ground, parked, and the engine is off. So to break down this coverage, this policy will help protect you in two areas. Number one, physical damage coverage for your aircraft while it is on the ground and the engine is off. This is what one insurance company says in their definition on the policy of ground coverage. Ground risks only. We will pay for accidental physical loss or damage to the aircraft occurring while the aircraft is on the ground and not in motion. We will not pay for any loss or damage occurring while the aircraft is in motion. This is a great coverage, especially in situations where a hangar burns down and destroys your aircraft or your aircraft was tied down and there was a hailstorm or windstorm that comes right through and damages your aircraft. This policy can also protect your aircraft against vandalism, theft, etc. Number two, this policy includes static liability coverage. What is static liability? It simply means it will help protect you in the event when your aircraft is being stored if it damages third party property or people. You may think to yourself, I don't really need this type of coverage. How could my aircraft possibly damage third party property or people while it is being stored? Well, over the years, I have either dealt with or heard of many situations where an aircraft, while it was tied down outside, got away when a windstorm came through and the aircraft ended up damaging other aircraft or even hitting a hangar and damaging it. This is where this third party liability will most likely kick in and cover you in the event of this type of loss. These two coverages could also potentially protect you if you had to trailer your aircraft from one location to another location. But we're going to talk about that in a future video. Now I'm glad that you made it to this part of this video because this can quickly void your storage policy if you do this. What is that? Not giving this video a big thumbs up. No, not that. What you really need to know is this. Because the moment that you turn the aircraft engine on, there will no longer be physical damage coverage for the aircraft as well as third party liability coverage. The intention of this policy is to cover your aircraft while it is on the ground and the aircraft engine is off. Are you wanting to try and save a little bit of money on your aircraft insurance by just having physical damage coverage for your aircraft while it is on the ground and not moving? But also want to have liability so that you can still legally fly your aircraft as per Transport Canada's regulations? If this is the case, then what you are looking for is all risk not in motion coverage with in-flight liability coverage. But what does that really mean? Well, I'm gonna answer that in a second. But also, if you stay to the end of this video, you'll find out why it is so important that you know what this coverage is and how it can protect you when you want physical damage coverage for your aircraft, whether it is tied down outside or it's hangered and it is not in motion and what you need to look out for that some insurance companies might sneak into their wordings that might reduce your coverage without you knowing it. So let's get to it. All risks not in motion coverage and in-flight liability coverage consists of two things. Number one, physical damage coverage. All risks not in motion includes physical damage coverage for the aircraft while it is on the ground and not moving and the engine is off. This is one definition that an insurance company gave for all risks not in motion coverage. Also, just before we read this definition, please note, of course, this definition can vary from insurance company to insurance company. And also whether a loss is paid or not paid, this is up to the insurance company and their policy wordings. Ground risk only. We will pay for accidental physical loss or damage to the aircraft occurring while the aircraft is on the ground and not in motion. We will not pay for any loss or damage occurring while the aircraft is in motion. Okay, okay, that kind of makes sense. But then how will you really know when coverage starts and when coverage stops? If you are pushing the aircraft and the engine is off and then while you're pushing it, you hit something and damage the wing, will there be coverage for the aircraft? In order to answer that, we have to see what the definition the insurance company gave for in motion. It says the aircraft is in motion when it is in flight 
And whenever it is moving under its own power or by the momentum generated by its power. In addition, the aircraft is deemed to be in motion at all times when the aircraft engine is running. So in my example that I just talked about, while you are pushing the aircraft, the aircraft engine is not running and is not moving under its own power or momentum. So in this case, the loss would most likely be covered. Now on the other hand, if you were taxiing your aircraft and hit something and damage the wing, then most likely the loss would be denied because the aircraft is moving under its own power. This is where some of the biggest misconceptions come from and causes some serious issues under this type of policy. Many people buy this coverage not realizing and fully understanding that if they want to taxi the aircraft and do a run-up there would be no physical damage coverage for the aircraft the moment the engine is turned on this is why the coverage is called all risk not in motion because it covers all risk while the aircraft is not in motion the second type of coverage that this policy would include is number two in-flight liability. This will give you third-party liability coverage so that you can legally fly your aircraft as per Transport Canada's regulations and in most cases will give you passenger liability coverage as well. The reason why I want to bring this up is because there is two types of liability coverages that you can get with this type of policy. You can get in-flight liability as well as static liability. But we're going to talk about what static liability is in a future video. Now that you made it through that and you understand what all risk not in motion coverage is including in-flight liability coverage is, you get rewarded because you made it to this point in the video where I talk about why this is a good coverage and what you need to look out for when choosing your insurance company. This is a great coverage if you're wanting to save money on your aircraft insurance and you are planning on not really flying your aircraft much throughout the year. Here are some of the coverages that may be included on your policy. Theft and vandalism, hail, lightning, and windstorm coverage. Damage from other aircraft or cars that may hit your aircraft while it is parked, etc. Some insurance companies want to help protect themselves when an individual purchases this type of coverage. So what some insurance companies do, not all of them, but some of them do this. Some insurance companies will reduce coverage for hailstorms, windstorms, etc. and slip into their policy wording saying, if you purchase all risk not in motion coverage, we will only pay for a certain percentage for hailstorms or windstorms, or we will increase your deductible if there's a loss in one of these types of situations. This is where it's always good to call up your aviation insurance broker and discuss with them what is covered and what is not covered on your aircraft insurance policy. Also, one of the biggest things that's not great about this coverage, instead of just buying full coverage, all risk flight and ground coverage, you lose out on some coverages such as force landing coverage or physical damage coverage for your aircraft after you turn on the engine and you want to go fly your aircraft. Are you wanting to try and save a little bit of money on your aircraft insurance by just having physical damage coverage for your aircraft while it is on the ground and when you turn on the engine and taxi it, but also still want to have liability so that you can legally fly your aircraft in Canada? If this is the case, then what you're looking for is all risks not in motion, including taxi coverage, as well as in-flight liability coverage. But what does that really mean? Well, I'm gonna answer that in a second, but also if you stay to the end of this video, you will find out why it is so important that you know what this coverage is and how it can majorly protect you in the event of a claim. This coverage consists of two major components. Number one, physical damage coverage for your aircraft. I want to read what one insurance company says about this type of coverage in their policy wording. Ground and taxing risks. We will pay for accidental physical loss or damage to the aircraft occurring while the aircraft is on the ground or while it is in motion taxiing. We will not pay for any loss or damage occurring while the aircraft is in flight. So what this policy means is it will give you physical damage coverage for the aircraft while it is on the ground and the engine is off. But in this case, it will also give you physical damage coverage for the aircraft when you turn on the engine and you want to taxi your aircraft around the airport. This makes sense, but you might wonder then, when does the physical damage coverage for the aircraft actually stop? Well, in order to answer that, we need to look at what this insurance company's definition is for in flight. It says the aircraft is in flight from the time when the aircraft is moving in an attempt to take off until the time when the aircraft has completed its landing roll. So basically, the moment you enter the runway and attempt to take off, 
And until you landed the aircraft on the landing roll and have left the runway and entered the taxiway, you will have no physical damage coverage for your aircraft. Please note, of course, this varies from insurance company to insurance company. And if a claim is to be paid out, that will be up to the insurance company and their policy wordings and definitions. Now, after knowing the definition for in-flight and ground and taxi risk, we can see that it's pretty straightforward. The easiest way to understand it is to think about it this way. If you were taxiing to the runway and hit a pothole and had a prop strike, and if you bought this type of coverage, technically you would still have physical physical damage coverage for your aircraft. But if you're about to take off and you're on the takeoff roll and had a bird strike, then because you are now in the in-flight definition of the policy wording, then technically you would have no physical damage coverage for your aircraft and your loss would most likely not be covered in this situation. Number two, in-flight liability coverage. This will give you third-party liability so that you can legally fly your aircraft in Canada and meet Transport Canada's regulations, as well as in most cases, you will also get passenger liability coverage as well. Now, by this point, I hope that you understand what all risks not in motion, including taxi coverage, as well as in-flight liability coverage is, and I'm happy that you made it to this point of this video. You're awesome, and thanks for sticking around, and I hope that you give this video a big thumbs up. But here is why it's so important that you know this type of coverage. Many people end up buying all risks not in motion not including taxi coverage. Pilots usually don't understand that the moment they turn on the engine, there is no physical damage coverage for the aircraft. And you know, as an aircraft owner, quite often you should be turning on your aircraft engine and letting it run for a little bit to make sure that everything is running smoothly. And you may even need to taxi your aircraft around the airport. Now here's the thing, over the years, I have heard of lots of losses that have just happened when somebody turned on their aircraft engine or when they're trying to taxi their aircraft around the airport. For example, I've heard of people turning on their aircraft engine like a Piper PA-18 Super Cub, and then right after the engine starts, the aircraft gets away from them and taxis right into a building. I've heard of people taxiing into potholes, as well as individuals having a prop strike when they hit a cement block that was near the taxiway at an airport. Now, if you didn't buy all risks not in motion, including taxi coverage, then in all these instances, if you tried to put in a claim, most likely it would not be covered. That is why if you plan on still doing run-ups and taxi around the airport, you should buy all risks not in motion, including taxi coverage. And to be honest, a premium is not much more than just all risks not in motion, not including taxi coverage. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the best coverage that you can buy for your beloved aircraft. That is all risk flight and ground coverage. And if you stay to the end of this video, you will find out the most important reason why you should purchase this coverage. What is all risk flight and ground coverage? Well, it consists of two major components. Number one, physical loss or damage to the aircraft occurring while the aircraft is on the ground, either while it is in motion or not, or occurring while the aircraft is in flight. What this basically means is there is physical damage coverage for the aircraft, whether the aircraft is in the air or on the ground. This is what all risk flight and ground coverage truly means. But in saying that, that is why I like to say that all risk, flight, and ground should, in almost all cases, include component number two. Number two, third-party liability. When you buy all risk, flight, and ground coverage, you should really also be getting third-party liability so that you can fly your aircraft as per Transport Canada's regulations. And in most cases, it should also include passenger liability unless you only have one seat in your aircraft. And in saying that, yes, I am talking to you Vans RV3 owners out there that only have one seat in your aircraft and always say, I don't need that passenger liability. I do understand that. So once again saying this, basically this is the best coverage that you can buy for your aircraft. It is by far the most comprehensive package. It should cover everything except for the exclusions that are written in the policy. Obviously what it will cover and not cover will vary from insurance company to insurance company. That is why it's always best to give your aviation insurance broker a call and double check with them what is covered on your aircraft insurance policy. Now what are some of those exclusions? The loss or damage results from wear and tear, deterioration, or mechanical failure of any part of the aircraft unless such loss or damage results directly from other damage covered by this policy. Well, this exclusion makes sense. As an aircraft owner, you need to make sure that you maintain your aircraft. Here is another one. You convert the aircraft to a seaplane or to an amphibian without giving the insurance company advance notice. This also makes sense because if you have a tailwheel aircraft or you have a nosewheel aircraft and you want to start flying it on floats, this would technically 
be a material change in risk on your aircraft insurance policy. And if you did this without getting approval from the aviation insurance company, and then you had an accident and tried to put in a claim, most likely your claim would be denied. See, I just wanted to bring up these two exclusions with you because they are common sense exclusions. This is why I just brought up these two exclusions because I didn't really necessarily want to talk about all of them because first, this video would be way too long and you would either stop watching it. Wait, wait, I'm still here. Turn that back on or you would fall asleep. So I just want to say you're welcome. But the point that I truly wanted to make was this. These exclusions are honestly common sense exclusions that would be in your aircraft insurance policy. You need to understand that the aviation insurance company is not trying to trick you into trying to get your aircraft claim denied. They just want you to think about that if you're planning on doing something that is way different than what you put on your aircraft insurance application, that you should at least tell them what you are planning on doing. And if you don't plan on telling them what you're doing and it is way different than is on the application, then why even pay for an aircraft insurance policy in the first place? Because if you have an accident, most likely the claim would be denied. So in a roundabout way, just think about this before you go flying next time. Am I doing something that I didn't mention to my aviation insurance company that I probably should tell them that I'm planning on doing? Congrats, you made it to the end of this video. And now here's the thing that I want you to think about when you have the option to buy all risk flight and ground coverage. The thing is with buying all risk flight and ground coverage, there are many common misconceptions about this coverage. Many people think that this coverage is going to be expensive, so they don't even get a quote for all risk flight and ground coverage. Or the pilot says, if I crash the aircraft, what does it really matter because I'm going to be dead anyway? And yes, I do get that response a lot. Sometimes people are joking and sometimes people are serious. First of all, all risk flight and ground can be relatively cheap, especially in comparison to how much you want to insure your haul value for. And with regards to just crashing your aircraft and dying in the accident, here is the thing, in the majority of accidents that I have heard of or that I have dealt with over the years, and yes, there has been a lot, but the thing is in the majority of these accidents that happen, the pilot and if they're carrying passengers, usually survive. After an accident, the pilot usually needs help getting the aircraft back. That's why it's nice to have the aviation insurance company because they got your back, especially if you purchase all risk flight and ground coverage. And after an accident, you just had a very traumatic event. And these are things that you do not want to have to think about. And the second thing as pilots that we all have to think about, if we have family, a spouse or children, if we do unfortunately pass away in an aircraft accident, we would want to make sure that our family is looked after. By having the aviation insurance company go get the aircraft, look after the recovery costs, etc. This would not be fair if we did not buy this coverage and we left all of this responsibility to our family. That is why I personally will not fly an aircraft that does not have all risk flight and ground coverage on it. I know, I know, it just got really real in here, but this is why I wanted to make this video is for you as my fellow pilots. I wanted to make sure that you, your family, friends, are all protected because you bought all risk flight and ground coverage. Pilots, please stay safe. Have fun flying knowing that you are protected and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.